Well, hello. So this is the video about the Razer Naga Trinity uh, mouse that is mine. You know, I've been having some difficulties with it. Uh, the scroll wheel, when you move it right or left, there's a click to it. And those clicks have not been working all that well. So I'm going to take this apart and I'll just show you how to take these apart. First, you got to remove the uh, tradable button plate, I guess we'll call it. Um, what you got to do is take a flat object and these pop off really easy for me because they've been off before. Mm -hmm. But when they're new, they don't come off so easily. So add a little bit of heat to help you a little bit. Uh, try to not bend them so much so you can reuse them. If you do bend them and they become unusable, you can always buy them off of uh, Amazon and AliExpress. I'll put a link in the description for these items. <clears throat> so there's four screws you have to take out. And I'm just doing this here. Grab either side of the mouse and pull, and you'll see it come apart. It's a little bit tricky on the right hand side, on the far side, it sticks a little bit. So there is a ribbon there is a ribbon cable you have to be careful with. But if you just lift up either side of the connector, like I just did there, you'll see that it pops out. And then there's a, a connector going from the top of the mouse to the main board. Uh, this side here just pops out of place, just move it away, just move it away. And then this will just come out. Usually I'd use tweezers, but I've had this thing apart so many times, all the connections just kind of come off. So looking at the main board, you've got another four screws. There's one there, and then another one right up there, and then the other two are right there and there. Now, if you have a thin enough screwdriver, you can get the two by the mouse wheel, no problem. Otherwise, you might have to move the mouse wheel out of the way, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment here. Now, I have replaced the mouse buttons before. Uh, these are not the originals. Uh, I guess I click a lot because both mouse buttons uh, had to be replaced. I started with the left one and then the right one went a couple weeks ago and then it was at that time I started having the problems after I put it back together that the the buttons for the scroll wheel were starting to go. The one on the right hand side where the, where the screwdriver is right above it, that's the mouse button I have to replace. With those four screws out, I can go ahead and take off the main board, but the scroll wheel is still a problem. So if you look, you'll see where the scroll wheel is attached at the top and bottom. Uh, there's one main plug going into the main board. You can just undo that. So you'll see at the bottom side, a little bit of a tab and you all you don't have to push a lot of force in it you don't want to break it but you can just move it out of the way just a little bit and the mouse wheel will pop out just like that so now with that out of the way you'll be able to take the whole board out so now that you have access to the buttons you can actually get a, a measuring micrometer or whatever you have to measure the actual dimensions of the buttons now this is important information to have because once you get onto uh, digikey or mauser or um, AliExpress, wherever you buy parts from, uh, you'll need to know those dimensions so it's a, a good fit. Also, you'll need to know uh, the termination type, how the soldering goes, if it's surface mount or if it's through hole uh, or what have you. Um, these particular ones were called gull wing solder joints. Uh, just basically means that they're folded up and under the, the button itself and their surface mount. So you can see that I measured everything, including the button size, the diameter of it. Uh, we just want to make sure we have a good fit uh, for the new, the new buttons. One thing that I didn't measure here was the height of the button. Uh, that's very important. Uh, you need to know the height so that when you move the mouse wheel left or right, it doesn't uh, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't bind so that it's not continuous being pressed. So they have to be the right height. I measured these buttons at just about six millimeter by six millimeter. 
at a height of about two and a half millimeter. So once I have all that information, I can go over to DigiKey, that's where I get all my parts from, and I can go ahead and start searching. So here we are on digikey.ca, digikey.com if you're in the States. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to search for tactile switches. It's a good idea to have some sort of clue what you're looking for before you actually start looking for it so you're not wasting too much time. But anyways, I've searched for tactile switches and in front of me I have a whole pile of different things I can search for or search by. So first being manufacturer really doesn't matter. Series doesn't matter. Packaging doesn't matter at this point. I just want to see what they have. So I want to search for a part that's active. Um, and I, I'm doing what I know right now. So I know that I want it off and momentarily switch. So that means it's off when it's not being pressed and it's momentarily on when it's being pushed. Uh, other things that I know that I need, it has to be a surface mount uh, for the mounting type. And I'm going to go with height. Uh, that'll narrow it down quite a bit. So I'm going to go with, uh, I think I chose between 2.1 and 2.5 millimeters for the button height. 2.3 and 2.4, 2.5. Yeah, so I chose a series just uh, to kind of give me an idea. Um, there's a gull wing termination style I knew about. Uh, so I chose that, again, just to narrow it down. You can see the count underneath the mouse. It says 155 of 13,000. You don't want to be searching through 13,000 hits, otherwise you'll be there all day. So it's easier to choose the things that you know and to eliminate the ones that you don't want. Choosing in stock also reduces it quite a bit. So moving along, you can see that I've chosen the, I don't want it to be illuminated, so I can get those out of the way. And then the outline, which is basically the footprint for it. Um, I chose the closest of what I measured, so 6.1 by 6.1. I measured 6 by 6. So you're not going to be able to see with the cheap tool that I have that 0.1 difference. So I just search for those queries that I put in, and instantly I came up with this one. Uh, very, very similar. Um, has a 2.5 millimeter actuator uh, height. And then, of course, the footprint 6 by 6.7. So I'm just looking to see what else is pertinent information. Uh, 160 grams of force. You can see the operating force there. So that's how much grams of force will have to be put onto the button in order for it to actuate. So 160 grams of force seems to be pretty nominal for what's displayed here. So those are the ones I went with. Now, just so you know, I ended up also getting another button that was very similar in size, except its height was 3.1. Now, the reason why I did that is because these things are so cheap. I think 30 some odd cents a piece. Uh, by the time I ordered a dozen and a half of them, it only cost me $6 per button type. So that's not bad. So I, I know I'll, I'll use them eventually. Uh, so I'm not worried about having extra buttons around right now. Okay, so through the magic of editing, you can see we're at our cart. So I am getting a couple of different buttons and some capacitors. Uh, they don't matter for this job, though. It's for another job. But the buttons are what we have. Um, I'm getting 18 of one and 6 of the other. Uh, there's a little bit of a price variation for the ones on the bottom, the ones by Omron. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive, so I'm not getting as many of those. So I'm just definitely getting enough to cover me what I need to get my mouse fixed. Uh, just in case those ones fit better. Um, but the other ones are cheap, so I'm getting a lot more of those. I'll use them eventually, most likely. So once you're at your cart, you just go ahead and pay. And then usually with DigiKey, depending on your location, for me it's within two to three days, I usually get parts. And you can go ahead and do your repair then, which I'm going to do now. So here we are at the repair bench. I've got the mouse in front of me here. So there is the button we're going to be working on right there. So that has to come out. So with newer electronics, you know, they use a non-leaded solder. So it takes a lot of heat to get these things off. And I don't want to put a lot of heat on the board because of the buttons that are in close proximity. So what I'm going to do here is I just put a little bit of flux just to help hopefully melt the solder a little bit. So here we go with a little bit of soldering. 
uh, just using my micro here and just adding a little bit of solder just to mix it in with the non leaded stuff and hopefully make it a little bit easier to undo the button from their, their spot. So we're just going to go around with some solder wick and hopefully remove as much solder as we can from the pads so we can get the button off of the pads without lifting the pads. How many times can I say pads in one sentence? Uh, but yeah, you'll see here that it's not as easy as you'd like it to be. Uh, even though you are wicking quite a lot of solder up, that button really just doesn't want to go anywhere. So you'll see in the upcoming few seconds here what it takes to get this one tiny teeny button off. So just uh, gonna give it a little go here to see if the button comes off easily. Excuse my hand in the way. And as you can see, there's just no give whatsoever. And I don't wanna rip the button apart. I don't know, I just don't do that. It's It shows kind of like laziness and just carelessness. So I'd rather sit here and do it this way and do it the right way. But you can see that button really doesn't want to come out. So I'm just trying each pad. Seeing if melting each pad will maybe hopefully lift the corner. But so far there's just no give. So I'm just going to add a little bit more flux because what I'm going to do next. I'm going to bring out the big guns. I've got some of this low melt solder. I'm sure you might not have heard of it before. It melts at a lower temp than your regular solder. I don't have the figure, I'll post it on the screen, but anyways, if you just go ahead and solder the joints like you would with normal solder, and what this hopefully is going to do, it, it'll kind of uh, mix with the original solder that's there, and make it a lot easier to remove the button. So I just hit all four joints there, you want to leave that, that pad that I was on, that's a ground pad and I found that the solder wasn't really melting there all that well especially the original solder so I kinda left a little bit more heat there and that's not the only time I'll do that for this pad here so now I just go around and I wick up the low melt solder hoping that it'll take the remnants of the other solder with it So after I think I'm done with that, I just take the tweezers and I give it a little wiggle. It is a little bit looser than before, so I know that it's starting to give. So I add a little bit of heat and my tweezers slipped and I took the button right off the button or switch. But I can get underneath the switch now, so I gently pry it, kind of ease it away from the pad, especially the pad that's giving the most trouble. I could have switched to a bigger solder end here, but I just, uh, at this point I thought, oh, it came loose. So I just went ahead and worked my way around it, and eventually it just, it just came off. And there was no damage to the pads, thank you, God. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to the work area where we just took off the button and I'm just going to pour some isopropyl alcohol onto a Q-tip and just go ahead and clean the area that we worked on. Uh, just clear up some of the old flux, uh, clean it up, get ready for new solder and the new button. We just don't want to be putting the new stuff on top of all that garbage there. Yuck. So cleaning it up is a good idea. Um, I always do that. I do watch some people that don't, and it kind of makes me crazy watching them put new parts and solder things on a pile of gunk. 
I can't imagine that would that would last very long. End up with cold solder joints and just a messy, messy work area. I basically try to keep in mind one rule for myself. I treat everything like I'm not the last one that's going to be in there. I always think that there's going to be somebody else after me servicing this thing. And I don't want them looking at me like I was a slob and had sloppy work ethic. So I always try to clean things up as nice as I can. All right, so here we are, nice and cleaned up, and there's a new button right beside it there. So that's a button we're going to be installing onto the mouse board. So I've already lined it up here. Well, I'm just about lining up here just to make sure that everything matches, and it looks pretty good. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to apply some fresh solder to the pads. So I add a little bit more flux to the newly soldered pads. And then I go ahead and place the new button down right on top of it. And then it's just a matter of touching each pad and letting the uh, solder melt and make a connection to the button termination. Now, of course, I didn't do the part of the video where I put everything back together and tested it. Uh, you know, it works. I'm using it right now to make this video. So everything is fine. I saved myself quite a bit of money by not having to buy a new mouse. Um, out of pocket, I'm probably about 20, 25 bucks for the parts, but I have those parts now and I won't have to order them again for quite some time. So that is going to be it for this video. See, I'm just cleaning off the mouse button right there. Get rid of all the excess flux and everything. Uh, make it look good. Nice clean joints there. And this one's done. But that's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, like and subscribe. Have a good new year.